Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and today I have a video about the sort of revamped 2.1 Fakener. Fakener is of course cast on crit cyclone discharge, and what has breathed new life into the build for me anyway is the blade vortex pairing with the discharge. Throughout this video I'll do a few demonstrations and basically make a guide at the end of it just to how to build this character. So right now I'm just running a quick fracture map here to show off the insane clear speeds and damage. And as you can see, I have several stacks of Blade Vortex while playing, which what they serve to do is give me almost always max power charges when you pair it with a Vols Protectors a special mod of getting power charges whenever you crit. Over here I have double boss malformation. This is purely served to show off the damage of the build, because as we all know, these pieties are actually pretty tanky. They are fairly um, fairly hard to kill, and that is absolutely nuts damage. Over here we have a Ziri Trio, just normal version, pop RF and they will instantly melt. And we're allowed to pop RF because we do have Vile Discipline, as well as some good leech, and And what? Fire Flask. But primarily you kill anything before you take too much damage from a Righteous Fire. So that's how that works. And over here, just a quick bit of its Ziri. You'll see that the strength of the build really comes into play on something like its Ziri, where I can continuously get my Blade Vortex stacks going. So any time I attack, almost any time I attack, and I'm next to something with Blade Vortex, I will be pretty much max charged. So popping off just continuous max charge discharges is completely absurd for this build because I don't even have a Vol's Devotion and I am doing more damage than my old Fakener did with a Vol's Devotion now. Now let's get into the setup of the character. A few things have changed overall, um, but we'll start off with the links themselves. So these days you don't need blood magic in your Fakener setup. What we currently run is Cyclone, Cast on Crit, Blade Vortex, Discharge, Life Leech, and Increased Crit Strikes. Your base setup, if you're just going for a pure 4-link, is Cyclone, Cast on Crit, Discharge, and Blade Vortex. You won't have Life Leech, but that's the, most, that's the bulk of your damage coming from those four there. I wouldn't recommend doing it without at least a 5-link, because Life Leech is incredibly useful. And then... Beyond that, you get increased crit strikes, which increases your critical strikes for Cyclone and for Discharge, resulting in a much smoother, um, much smoother playstyle and more damage for your Discharge as well, giving it a more reliable crit. It also is a fairly cheap uh, last link, so it doesn't increase your mana cost too much. Now the way we don't run Blood Magic anymore is a couple of Aerion Rings. I only have a 7 and a minus 6 right now, so that's minus 13. Um, it's not entirely necessary to get two minus 8s, because you do survive off of mana just a little bit. That is thanks to Clarity. So because we're now hybrid, you run Clarity on life. Over here I have Clarity attached to Blood Magic. It's only level 11. Choose whatever level you want to leave it at. 11's fine for me. It nets us 34 mana regen a second, and cycling costs 11 mana with my current setup. So for the most part, as you can see, it's always going to be regening. Rallying Cry helps for certain situations if you feel like you really need it. And then for purely no regen maps even, I run um, Warlord's Mark plus Blasphemy over one of my other auras. So that's how we take care of mana for this entire build. As well as that, if you really want, you can just wear three Elrion pieces and that'll be a completely free skill. Entirely up to you. Now the chest we're using is of course a Vols Protector, that hasn't changed. You still definitely need one of these if you want to play Cast on Crit, Cyclone, Discharge. There is no getting around that. Um, but here's Blade Vortex. As I mentioned in the video, what it does is it stacks up and every single time it crits, you're going to be getting a power charge. And when it starts stacking up beyond, say, 5 stacks, you're getting into the 5-10 stack range, which is what you'll usually be at. Um, every single rotation is pretty much going to give you max power charges. So every time your cast on crit actually triggers, your discharge will be going for 7 power charges, which is just 
overshadows any other spell in the game by far, which is the strength of the build and why you build entirely around Discharge. So now that we took care of that, um, the dagger. You need a Vagan dagger. It doesn't really matter too much what the base is. The base you really want to avoid getting is a gutting knife, I think it is, or a fiend dagger. The 60% crit implicit bases, those are the worst by far out of the daggers. The golden chris, it's fairly slow, but it's got really good crit and good crit um, implicit. So it's certainly an option, but ideally you would like something like a skein, or even a boot blade works well, so does a slaughter knife. Boot Blade and Slaughter Knife have the exact same stats for what you're looking for, Attack Speed and Crit. But a Skeen is slightly faster than those with the same level of Crit. And you want Hits Can't Be Evaded. It's a Vagan Dagger, that's what we're going for. The purpose of that is to completely avoid your need for accuracy. With these, this mod, you have a 100% chance to hit all the time, which is absolutely amazing for cast on Crit. You no longer need accuracy from gear, and we don't get almost any accuracy from the passive tree, so it would be really hard to even scale that sort of accuracy. What you do with a Vagan Dagger, typically you just get it blue, it says hits can't be evaded. If you have plans of multi-modding it, then you just go for a pure regal and hope to not ruin it by getting something like this. Right here is fairly perfect. You then multi-mod it, put on spell damage, put on crit strikes, like this one over here, uh, crit strike chance, and attack speed. That'll cover everything you need for your Vagan Dagger. If you have no intention of multi-modding, so it's just going to be a cheap option for you, then simply grab your blue, org it, regal it, and put crit chance on it if you didn't already get it. That's all you need, because as you can see, my dagger right here just has crit chance and spell damage, and it is all you need, really. But a multi-mod will come through for the most possible damage for you. Next onto our setup, let's go with the gloves. Gloves, ideally you want some Malagaras. That'll help cap your crit, that'll also give you a bunch of crit multi, and also dexterity is actually really important on the build now as well, to hit that 155 dex for Blade Vortex, as well as um, Vile Haste, which is also super expensive. That said, they cost two exalts right now. A really good alternative are Face Breakers. Currently, when I have full power charges up, my discharge is going to be critting, let's see, about 80% of the time, I think. So, the global crit multi here is absolutely huge for damage. They cost you only a few chaos, and yet they give you so much damage in return, so they are incredibly worth it. On the top end of gear, you're going to have enough crit that Malagaras don't even really do anything for you, except for the crit multi. So in that sense, face breakers are strictly pretty much better for the build anyway. Now, we are officially hybrid for this build, and the reason we are hybrid is because with the life version of Fakner, I seem to only be able to squeeze about 4.2 to 4.5k life out of the build. And that's just really not enough anymore in this current day and age for um, Uber at Siri, for high-end maps, that sort of thing. So by going the hybrid route, you end up getting a lot more effective HP. So our current playstyle is to have Discipline up. Mine's still not very high level, I think it's 18 now. Um, in the end, you should be able to hit about 5k, yes, maybe 5.5k, with 1500-ish life unreserved. So that totals you, let's just say, 6, 7, 8k effective HP, as opposed to just pure life, which will only get you 4 to 4.5k. And in the process, you're not really losing anything. On top of that, you can run clarity on your life without feeling terrible, as opposed to a life version where you can't do that. So you have to rely much more on your jewelries. So with that hybrid um, mentioning, what we're doing is getting most of our ES from the helm and the shield. This helm I bought as a hybrid helm, it cost me like 5 chaos. It's only got 240 ES, so it's not particularly huge on the ES front, but it's got nice resists, it's got nice life. You should be able to afford something like that pretty comfortably. The shield over here, I paid 30 chaos for this thing. What you're looking for is just really high ES and some spell power. Spell power is pretty nice, 
for the build because we don't get all that much on the actual build so any extra spell power you can get will give be a very large boost but your priority here is large amounts of ES because that is the primary slot for your energy shield as well as that I went for boots with high ES what you're looking for is about 25 to 30 percent run speed or movement speed as well as a decent little bit of ES resist if you can get them but I've covered my resists mostly from the rest of the build, so it's really quite easy to get resists in, in the long run. Belt, um, you're going to need a bit of strength somewhere. Uh, I've got quite a bit of strength by these two items combined, so a heavy belt's a really good idea. I managed to go for some chaos resistance, because since you're hybrid, chaos damage does bypass your ES, and the more chaos resist you can get, the safer you'll be in those tough chaos situations. I've only managed to get chaos resist so far on the belt, but if you can squeeze it in on other slots as well, while still capping your resist, by all means do that, it's very worth doing. So a few a few resists and some ES with a strength belt, really good option there. Your jewelries, as I mentioned, are going to be Aureon. That's your preference, a minus 7, a minus 8 if you can get it. Uh, to craft these, typically just go Org, Regal, and then put something else on it. This is an old one which has life on it at the moment. Ideally, you put 5 to 20% ES from Elrion. I don't think mine can actually do that yet. No, he needs to be level 7. And that'll give you the most boost out of the craft. You're going to need a bit of dexterity somewhere as well. I managed to get a Elrion ring with some dexterity. You can craft some resists on as well if you really need them. Rings should be pretty damn easy to get because minus sixes and sevens, they're not expensive at all. Minus eights, that's when you start getting, start paying a lot more for the rings. Diamond rings are ideal once you start capping your resists. Uh, otherwise, get some other rings that have resistances as well. But ideally, you want some diamond rings because that's a potential 60% crit chance. Your neck. Uh, Vol's Devotion, of course, best in slot. If you can get your hands on one of those, by all means, do it. It's amazing. It is really expensive, though, and as far as I'm concerned, the build doesn't currently need it. You find, like, still enormous amounts of damage without the neck. For reference, I am up to 27,000 average damage for my discharge, with 7 power charges up. So when your power charges up, discharge will say 27,000 damage at the top there. And I still have a level to go. I've still got a few other upgrades to make. So for reference, my old Fakner had 24,000 damage up with all charges up, including endurance charges for Vol's Devotion. The damage here is already completely insane. Otherwise, what you're looking for is high crit multi. That's going to be your biggest damage boost. Some crit chance, that would be very nice as well. Stats, yes. That's all good stuff too. Um, yeah, next a pretty flexible option. The only thing I would really recommend is a crit multi-roll, because that's going to be the biggest boost to the build. Now then, you need some way to trigger your elemental equilibrium, because in the build we take elemental equilibrium. And what that means is whenever you hit with your cyclone for some sort of elemental damage, here I have fire, it makes everything weak to lightning and cold, minus 50 resistance. So that's where we get all of the penetration for the build for our discharge. I currently just have fire damage on my neck. If you have a Vol's Devotion, you need cold damage somewhere. But at the moment, I have fire damage. That's fine, because I don't do any other fire damage. So whenever I hit with my Cyclone, I am continuously resetting the resistance to the monster to be negative to lightning and that allows Discharge to hit extremely, extremely hard. One other thing to mention is you can use a Call of the Brotherhood ring over one of your other rings. It'll make mana a bit tougher unless you use an Elrion neck as well. But the purpose of that is to split your damage into two different halves, Lightning and Cold. And Cold will help you freeze a lot, and if you still have fire damage somewhere, then you're still getting negative 50 resistance to both cold and lightning, and your damage is still going to be completely insane. So that works out just fine, and it's something I may explore doing, but they are fairly expensive. They run at about two exalts a piece. Let us look at the links. Um, 
For the most part, I have here Blood Magic and Clarity. That's just to run Clarity in my life. I have a self-cast Blade Vortex. That's something we can do, and you should probably do, just before a fight. As you can see, it's free because of the area and jewelry, so it's not a big deal at all. But the point of this is, just before a tough boss fight, if you can stack up a f just a few stacks, as soon as you run in, the Blade Vortex is going to hit the um, boss or monster and give you instant power charges. Otherwise, without that, you have to spin, and it takes just a bit of time to ramp up your Blade Vortex to be giving you continuous power charges. That's a nice option for something like um, Vals on um, Atsiri, in the Atsiri zone, the trio, Atsiri herself even, most other bosses. As far as my Helm setup goes here, I have a Vile Haste, that is my weapon of choice for Vile skill, patched to increased duration, as well as Vile Discipline. Whenever you're going into a boss fight, Vile Discipline and Vile Haste, they last a good little while, long enough for you to kill them, uh, kill anything more often than not. Attached to increased duration, and over here we just have a Purity of Lightning thrown in, because that's where I have room for it. Purity of Lightning is used to get max lightning resist, it helps with reflect and a bit of resistances for the build to help you cap out. In the long run it should do additional 4%, so that helps with reflect just a little bit more. Over here we have Assassin's Mark, Self-Cast, Discipline, and Ice Goal. That's all pretty self-explanatory. Assassin's Mark, I feel, is going to be the biggest damage boost for the build, and you don't need it permanently. If you want to run Blasphemy with it, by all means, try and shove it in somewhere. But I only really need it Self-Cast every now and again, just on the tougher stuff, to really maximize my damage. Welling Blades fortify faster attacks, that is your go-to movement skill, and that also keeps up your fortify for those tougher situations. You want qualities for all those attack speeds so you can do it faster, and fortify quality is pretty good for increased duration as well. Righteous Fire, we pop that just for certain really tough fights like the trio where you would rather kill them absolutely instantly rather than beat around the bush. Cast and Damage Taken setup is fairly crucial to the build, so Cast and Damage Taken and Mortal Call and Increased Duration, even without Endurance Charges, that gives you a good like 1 to 2 seconds of immune to physical damage, which is really important, considering we have no other defense and we are prone to stuns. So I highly recommend doing that, and it is quite quite up to you what level you leave them at. I just leave them at level 9 and 11 as I bought them. And that's fine. On top of that, we have Rallying Cry. Rallying Cry will just give you a bit of damage and some extra mana regen on those minus mana regen maps. Because right now, I can't quite sustain on a pure mana regen map. Uh, on a... Can't sustain off of pure mana on a mana regen map, is what I mean to say. So that's the gear and the gems covered. Now we look at the passive tree. It's had a bit of a revamp, because we are hybrid. And also because of a few other things. I used to go to disemboweling, I realized you don't any longer need to do that with things like jewel sockets with the crit strikes support gem and some other things. So going to disemboweling and through here, no longer that worth it. It's still potentially doable if you're life based, but even for the life based I kind of stick around here and up to the witch tree. So what we do now is we go up to the witch tree and more of the Shadow Tree to really scale out our crit from spells. So we're boosting our um, Discharge spell crit quite high, and on top of that getting a lot of crit multi as well. So you get crit multi there, you get a bit over here, and a bit over there. On top of that you got these as an option, and if you really feel like going full damage you grab those. But in the end, with uh, my face breakers, with my neck, and everything in total, it makes my discharge hit really, really hard, and quite often it'll crit, so it's very worth doing. We go through a majority of the ES, in the end the build has something like 200% ES, which is quite nice, and on top of that we get most of the AoE from the tree, which lets you... it's, it's more of a defensive boost than anything, because it lets your cyclone hit from further away. So on top of that, quality on cyclone is very important, because the less AoE and the less quality you have on Cyclone, 
Just the closer you have to be to monsters to hit them, the more chance they have to hit you back or hit you first. So the AoE is quite important. No. Um, besides that, we are traveling to all of the power charges on the tree to get seven power charges, so that maximizes your damage. We get all of the dagger crit nodes. You don't take out as touch because that own the crit multi there only applies to your cyclone and not overall to your spell, which is what's doing all of the damage. We grab Vile Pact, we grab Ghost Reaver. You of course need that to turn your life leech into energy shield leech. And of course, Elemental Equilibrium. Now, if you are leveling the build, I will go ahead and mention what you probably start off doing. Actually, I'll mention you don't have to be a Scion as opposed to a Witch. You can be a Witch, you can be a Templar even if you really want. All the stats are pretty similar. If you're a Templar, you just go through there. If you're a Witch, you can grab that point and go up, save those points. Or you can go up through here, which will waste a couple of extra points, but it's really good damage. Whereas if you're a Scion, you can either go the attack speed route, or you can go the spell damage route. I chose to go attack speed, god knows why, but it does lend me the option of getting these crit multis later on down the line. In any case, if you're leveling, go straight out here, over here, grab True Strike, go up and make a beeline directly for the crit dagger notes. So over here, then you go up here, and over here. By this point, you'll be something like level 30, and you'll have most of the crit from your tree already. So if you really, if you have the gear available to you while leveling, uh, at 38, you can already go cast on crit, cycle, and discharge. All you need is a 4-link Vols, preferably a 5-link, a couple of Elrond Juries, and you'll be good to go. A couple of Uncle Daggers are really good to start out with. I leveled with Frostblades up until 38. You can use anything, it doesn't really matter. But bear in mind, if your leveling is hybrid, it's going to be a bit tough to maintain your life and ES. So leveling as life isn't a bad idea. There'll be a life passive tree in my uh, link as well, where you can just, you know, be life and respec into this next at, at a later stage. For me, it costs something like 50 regrets to respec from the life to the hybrid version. But if you're playing the soft core, you can go to the hybrid version and get away with it all the same anyway. But these are good to get early on as well for just stacking a bit of life too. Main take home message though is to get the crit dagger notes. That fills out most of your crit and lets you actually level as cast on crit, cycle, and discharge. From then you probably grab the area nodes and then start going across here, grab EE and then the other area nodes. And you fill out all your damage as you go for the rest of the leveling experience. But entirely up to you guys how you level this. That's just my suggestion. So, what else is there to say? A life flask, that'll help you just through some chaos damage moments. So I would recommend still having a life flask of an instant variety. Very nice as well. And it's Siri Flask, that helps you resist some chaos damage, so by all means get one of those, as well, a bit, as well as a bit of extra leech and chaos damage. A Run Speed Flask, pretty essential to cycloning and running around fast. Um, in the end I've gone with a Topaz and a Ruby. You can kind of drop the Ruby and grab a thick granite. That will actually give you quite a lot of uh, physical mitigation, so for certain maps like if you have porcupines, it's quite useful. So right here we have 3%. Pop our granite, we're up to 40% reduction, which is very nice to sustain. Ruby's not entirely essential. A topaz is fairly essential though, as reflect with just life leech hurts quite a bit considering how much damage we do. So you more often than not need your topaz flask up for reflect, but you can get away without it. On top of that, you can use something like Warlord's Mark in conjunction with your Life Lich, and then that'll take care of almost all Reflect problems anyway. Aside from that, Increased Area, we shove that in over Increased Crit Strikes whenever we want to clear maps easier, if they're particularly below your level and it's that easy. Um, Conk Effect, if you really want to shrink down your thing, but I don't find myself using that too often at all. And... Yeah, for certain um, early reflect maps and 
no regen maps. I sub out my clarity and blood magic for blasphemy and warlord's mark. And I'll get rid of purity of lightning. That's up to you how you guys choose to deal with those sorts of situations, but that's what I do at the moment. As far as I can tell, that is everything about the character. Right now it is insanely strong, thanks to the pairing of Blade Vortex and Discharge. Um, I will probably be taking on Uber at Ziri very soon without a Vols Devo. You don't even need a 6-link for the build, so it's actually really cheap to get off the ground and into some extreme effectiveness and damage numbers. But as I said, I think it should be quite doable um, without a Vols Devotion to kill Uber at Ziri, so that is... Uh, Good news indeed. It should be ma should make for quick Uber at Ziri runs that are somewhat reliable. Still a bit sketchy until I get a bit more ES. With 5k ES, 5.5k, that's more what I'm going for. Which will require maybe a helm upgrade, maybe a couple other passive changes, and a higher discipline. So that is the character for Cast on Crit Cyclone Discharge, also known as Fakener. Now hybrid Fakener with a Blade Vortex involved too. Uh, thank you guys for watching the guide and the video, and see you guys next time. Hope you try out this build. Have a lot of fun. Later.